It boasts some of the most famous people on the planet, claims to be capable of curing drug addiction, and says that following its teachings will lead to a life of success and fulfillment. And yet, despite these promises, Scientology remains an organization mired in controversy. Tonight, we look at new allegations concerning Scientology's leader, David Miscavige. Our investigations began after some former high-level members spoke to the St. Petersburg Times in Florida, claiming that Miscavige struck members of his staff on numerous occasions, allegations the church denies. This is what those staffers say happened inside the Church of Scientology. The Church of Scientology. Some call it a manipulative cult. The controversial Church of Scientology. Eight fellow members of the Church of Scientology. Others say it's a well-established religion that helps people reach their potential. A lawyer for the Church of Scientology. All three of those Scientologists. Since its inception in the 1950s, the Church of Scientology has rarely been far from controversy. You don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. You are closing the second half of the and now it's under attack again. Former senior insiders claim the church's current leader, David Miscavige, has created and encouraged a climate of violence within senior staff and was frequently violent himself. He viciously beat him, knocked him to the ground. Marty Rathbun, seen here in a Scientology magazine, was an inspector general, a top lieutenant to David Miscavige and oversaw the church's legal affairs. And then he knocked him down in his chair. Amy Scobie was a church executive who helped expand its outreach to celebrities. He just walked up and he hit me on the side of the head. Bruce Hines says he was a high-level auditor, a kind of therapeutic counsellor. Hi, Wendy. Any messages? And supporting their allegations is Mike Rinder, who for many years was Scientology's main spokesman. He's now speaking out against the church, the same church he defended to ABC News in 1998. I think that there isn't a person on this earth that could not benefit from the teachings of Scientology. No, I'm not stopping no. here. You listen no. to me for a second. The church's current spokesman is Tommy Davis, seen here on the left in an infamous 2007 exchange with a BBC reporter. The beginning of the interview! We met with him at Scientology's New York church, where he granted us a rare interview. Is Mr. Miscavige violent towards Scientologists and has he been physically violent in the past? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He is not. He is not and, and uh, it's not in his character, it's not in his nature and it is not the kind of person he is. One quality that has always set us apart is that we are unselfish. Yes, we have an utter monopoly on workable solutions but we share those solutions with anyone who reaches for them. This was David Miscavige in December 2004. It is my honor to present our first Freedom Medal of Valor to the most dedicated Scientologist I know. Presenting an award to the church's biggest star and his close friend, Tom Cruise. But the private face of Miscavige, according to these former Scientologists, is very different. Do you think David Miscavige should continue to be the figurehead of the Church of Scientology? No. Um, I'll just say it outright. I consider him to be a sociopath. I think the man's stark staring mad. Hello? My name is David Miscavige. Energetic and charismatic, David Miscavige quickly moved up the ranks after joining the Church and became outright leader after Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard's death. Approximately two weeks ago, he completed all of his research as he had set out to do. Which he announced in this 1986 video. L. Ron Hubbard discarded the body he had used in this lifetime for 74 years, 10 months, and 11 days. I was very much involved in, in, in litigation that was going on, on ongoing cases, but also intelligence side of it. Just a few years into his leadership, David Miscavige and Marty Rathburn were battling back against detractors and after this devastating article in Time magazine, which referred to Scientology as a thriving cult of greed and power, they decided to go on the offensive. Miscavige agreed to appear live on this broadcast in 1992. 
it remains his only television interview. There's a little bit of a problem in getting people to talk critically about the Church of Scientology, because quite frankly, they're scared. Oh, no, 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 well, no, I'm no, telling no, 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 I'm, I'm let me telling tell you, you let, me, let me explain something to you. The, the most disingenuous thing is that you have those people. Now, let's not give the American public the wrong impression. When you got to the studios, the Nightline studios, what was the atmosphere like? It was pretty uh, electric. If you really looked at the big picture of what's happening in Scientology, it isn't really controversial. But these former senior Scientologists say as Miscavige's leadership progressed, he became increasingly eccentric. He got his beagle, and he literally had somebody tailor a blue vest sweater for his beagle dog and made up epaulets, these Sea Org ranks in the Sea Organization, and he had four stripes put on, captain, for the dog. And he would bring the dog in. If those guys didn't salute the dog, he would just viciously berate them and invalidate them. Hang on a sec. You're saying that he ordered the most senior ranks in the Church of Scientology to salute his dog? Yes, sir. He comes with his dog with a sweater with commander stripes. And the dog let out a little bark when she saw me. And uh, David Miscavige said, you know, you got something going on because she, she is detecting out ethics and you have something going on. I think what the dog was really saying is, you know, you look like the only halfway sane person. Can you help me out of this outfit? One former member says that Mr. Miscavige had a vest tailored for his dog with epaulets, similar to those that would be worn by Sea Org members. And he would order staffers to salute the dog. That is utterly completely, totally ridiculous. Your own reaction was one of complete disbelief, I think it's fair totally, to say. Totally, because it's uh, unbelievable. And yet, there are consistencies between individuals who observe the dog dressed in a particular way mm -hmm. and a particular breed. Amy Scobie also confirms that Mr. Miscavige would bring his dog round dressed like a uniformed member. And if the dog barked, she says he would suggest that the individual towards whom the dog barked, was behaving badly, had some kind of negative problem. Is that true? I don't know. I mean, maybe we should have the dog come in here and see if it barks at you, Martin. Marty Rathbun says it was much more serious than a uniform right. dog.